All right, everybody, let's start talking about ionic and covalent together, because so far we've only talked about the IMF um, forces that are involved between covalent molecules. Last semester, we looked at a lab that investigated the properties between ionic and covalent substances. We saw that ionic substances were hard, they were solid. Covalents were a little bit softer in general. Uh, ionics you're going to find are going to typically be solids at room temperature, and a lot of your covalents are usually liquids or gases at room temperature. Can they be solids? Of course, but a lot of them are going to be liquids and gases. Um, we saw that the ionics have really high melting points and high boiling points, whereas the covalents tend to have lower melting points and boiling points. We saw that the ionic substances were really good electrical conductors when they were solutions and that the covalents are not good conductors. And um, ionics are not easily vaporized, which means that they don't escape into gas form easily, which kind of goes back to the fact that it has a high boiling point, whereas covalents are usually more easily vaporized. Well, why is this? Why do these properties exist? And the answer lies in those intermolecular forces. Ionic bonds create this really strong force of attraction between the ion particles that make up that um, substance. The covalent intermolecular forces are weaker than those ionic bonds are. And because the bonds are weaker, it results in those softer molecules or liquids and gases, the lower boiling points and things like that. So let's take a look and compare these. Up here, this purple and green picture is showing you an ionic solid. Um, you can see that it's formed because of a positive metal ion and a negative non-metal ion. And these are attracted to other nearby positive and negative ions, creating this really strong crystal lattice. Okay, the smaller little picture over here shows that they all attract to nearby ions. So the ionic bonds exist between all of these um, oppositely charged particles. And that is very, very, very strong bond. The covalent molecules are held together by these intermolecular forces, and intermolecular forces are weaker than intramolecular forces. So these little dotted lines here, you know, attracting between two water molecules are weaker than this attraction between the positive and the, and the negative ion. So remember, ionic bonds are between a metal and a nonmetal. These are the strongest intramolecular force. Ionic bonds are stronger than covalent bonds. Ionic bonds are stronger than the covalent intermolecular forces, such as London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interactions, and um, hydrogen bonds. And it's very, very strong because of that lattice structure I showed you on the last slide. Now, there's two ways to differentiate between the strength of an ionic compound. We can look at the charge difference. So looking at the positive ion and the negative ion, what's that difference in charges? And we can look at the size. So what does this all mean? Let's take a look. So we're gonna compare these ionic compounds, NaCl, MgCl2, and Al2O3. We're gonna ask ourselves, which of these has the strongest ionic bond? Well, all three of these are roughly the same size. They're all found in the same period on the periodic table. They all have the same amount of energy levels. So that means we're going to have to go down and look at the charge difference. So NaCl is formed from Na plus one and chlorine minus one. MgCl2 is formed from Mg2 plus and chlorine one minus. And Al2O3 is formed from Al3 plus and O2 minus. That's the biggest charge difference. I kind of picture it like a little number line in my head, whereas sodium chloride is going from plus one to minus one. Magnesium chloride is going from plus two to minus one. Aluminum oxide is going from plus three to minus two. That's a big charge difference holding those ions together, and that's why Al2O3 would be the strongest ionic bond. Let's compare these ones then. BEF2, MgCl2, and SRI2. Which of these would have the strongest ionic bond? Well, all of these have the same charge difference because they all have a positive two cation and a negative one anion. So then that must be based off of the size. 
So let's take a look at their placement on the periodic table and think about their energy levels. So BEF2 is going to be the smallest because those particles, the BE and the F, only have two energy levels. MgCl2, that's going to be the middle size, and that's because you've got the Mg is in the uh, both of these actually are in the third period. They have three energy levels. And then SRI2 is going to be the largest because they have, um, is that four energy levels? I don't, I'm not looking at my periodic table right now. Actually, I think it's five. Uh, anyways, the BEF2 is going to be your smallest ionic compound, which means it's going to have the strongest ionic bond because those nuclei are closer together than they are with the SRI2. You're gonna have a greater attraction between that cation and anion then in the BEF2, creating this really strong ionic bond. All right, so if you have any questions about comparing the ionics, just let me know.